All right guys, today we're looking at the valve system inside our small Briggs and Stratton engines. Right here in my hand is an uh, exhaust valve. I know it's the exhaust valve because it's the smaller of the two valves. So let me get this engine here. If you're looking at these two valves here, this one's the smaller one, which is the exhaust, and the intake is always the bigger one. So here we have the intake and here we have the exhaust. And this is where the exhaust muffler would go, and this is where the intake would go, which is where the carburetor is. After that we have the valve spring, which is just a little spring, that goes on slightly like that. And then we have what's called the spring retainer, and that's this here. As you can see there's two holes in it, a bigger hole and a smaller hole. The bigger hole is where you slide the valve into, just like this. So the valve goes inside that hole and then it moves over to the center hole, which is too small to let the valve come out. So once it goes to the small hole you can't pull it out and the spring comes up just like that. So that retainer washer is what holds the spring on. It keeps the assembly just like this. Then if you remember when we took the tappets out, the tappets will be pushing on the valve to make it open and close. And then the last part of that cycle, or the first part depending on how you look at it, is the camshaft. So the camshaft is what pushes the tappet. So the camshaft has these lobes here and the tap it rides on top of those lobes and every time it hits a bump it pushes up which pushes the the valves up so I can show you that here if I put this tap it back where it goes right here just like that and I push on that tap it with my finger acting like my fingers the camshaft first you can see it pushes that spring up just like that and then up on the top side you can see that it opens the valve up too so my hand right now is what, doing what the camshaft would do. It's moving both pieces at the same time. So what we're gonna look at specifically today is how to remove those springs. To do that, we have a very special tool. It's called a spring compressor or a valve spring compressor. This one is actually for Briggs and Stratton engines, but it works in all different types of engines that have similar um, spring configurations. So let's zoom into that and take a look at how to remove it. So right now I have the engine oriented um, on its side with the valves laying right here. So this, um, the valve inside here is inside the engine and they're laying just like that. And we're going to try to take this spring off right now, the spring in the washer, so the valve slides right out. One key thing to remember when doing this is I want to make sure that this washer here has the big hole oriented towards the table or downward. The reason is, is when I put my com uh, spring compressor on it, I'm gonna be picking up on the washer. So right now it's hooked on just like that. And when I pick this washer up, it's gonna allow the valve to fall into that bigger hole. And then the valve will slide right outside that bigger hole. So you make sure that that big hole there is oriented down. You just kinda have to peek in there and see how it looks. Um, from my angle, I can see that it's oriented down, but um, it just took a second to find it. If I can't, if it's not oriented down, you can try and turn it with your fingers, or you can clamp down it with the spring compressor and turn it. But it'd be a lot easier. It's almost um, near impossible to get it off oriented the other way because there's not enough room below the springs there uh, to to move it. So you have to move it upward. So let's take a look at that. The first thing I'm going to do is show you a little bit about this spring compressor here. It has these openings at the top. This is going to clamp down on the top and the bottom of that spring, rather the top of the washer and the bottom of the spring. So I want to make sure that these two pieces here are open just wide enough this direction with this bolt here, just wide enough from uh, either end of the prongs to fit the diameter of the valve in there, just like that. If it's too wide, it'll slip around. If it's too small, it just simply won't fit. So just like that, it'd be good. You can adjust that to fit however you need. So now I'm gonna close this back up using this uh, top piece here. You can see as I turn it, it closes. I can turn it the other way and it open is, opens. So I'm gonna put this right inside there, about as wide as I can get it to fit. And what I'm gonna do is, and I'll zoom in so you guys can see this, I'm gonna push the top one over the washer I'm going to push the bottom part of the spring compressor just inside. I'm just going to push it through the spring. Just a little bit of force and it pushes right into the spring. So just like that. 
I'll zoom back out so I can show you how to take this out. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna tighten this down. And what that is, it's gonna tighten the spring or compress the spring, which releases tension off of the valve. Right now the springs are the only thing holding the valves in because of their own um, tension. But once I release the tension, now I can move it around freely in there and there's nothing to hold it in. So now I can pick it up, just like I was saying before, align that valve to the washer or to the bottom hole in the washer and it slides just out just like that. So before it was hooked in there and then I picked the valve up and slid it out. And then before I do that, before I let go of that valve or try to pull it out of there, I just want to loosen the tension on it again because right now it's compressed and it wants to jump out of there. So if I turn this back, release that tension again, and just slide it out, it'll come out nice and easy just like that. So now you can see here, we just have a void where that valve was, and we got one more to go.